I've just pulled up to a, an old club water. I haven't fished it for absolutely donkeys. It must be, I don't know, I'd only be guessing, eight, nine, maybe even 10 years. I tell you what's in the middle of nowhere and it's absolutely idyllic. And just before I got round the corner, approaching this, this little water, so I can hear the, I can hear the carp. Um, as I was saying, just as I approached, I thought, I bet there's somebody here. It's absolutely tiny. So if there's someone fishing here, if just like say one person, it's sort of, yeah, it's a bit tight. It's not even half an acre, this place. It's probably, I don't know, 40 yards wide by perhaps 50 long. So you get some idea. But this place is absolutely stunning. Can't hear anything other than nature. We're on a tiny little lane. Might be a B road, um, but it's just country lanes all the way around. It's, it's uh, yeah, it's great. Absolutely lovely and I can't wait to, to fish it. Let's go. Oh, this is amazing. I'm absolutely buzzing. I really am. Guys, I'm going to be um, I'm going to be quite stealthy because, as I said earlier, this place is tiny and. Uh, the fish aren't daft, they will sense that there's something not right. Oh, this is amazing. Let me turn the camera around and show you this. Chocolatey brown, all coloured up everywhere all right let's go for a walk this is really overgrown all right let's have a look down here There we go, he's there again. He knows I'm here. He knows I'm here. There he is, look. Right there. Right, I'm gonna put some dog biscuits out, he's right there. be really quiet so you can hear him. Let's see if I can get the pole a bit closer. Here we go. Oh, you're kidding me. He's gone. Oh. Sorry about that. I really wanted to get some good footage for you. Hopefully I can get some later. Yeah. 
I'm going to have to crouch down. Okay, guys. Let's go for a walk. You're probably wondering why I haven't got my uh, my shades on. It will help slightly, but this water's so coloured up that they won't give me a massive, uh, massive uh, advantage. I just hope you can hear me. I'm in a little bay now and uh, it looks really inviting so uh, I'm gonna get my shades on, plonk myself down and give it a go. There's a lovely tree line but um, about 10 yards in front of me, slightly to my right, I'll show you in a bit. The trees are actually in the water so I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to be really careful. Um, there's a guy just turned up behind me, about 30 yards behind me, fishing out in the corner. Um, but I've seen some movement here. So this looks really promising. I've got a really good feeling about this. Someone needs to invent a quiet Velcro. Okay guys, I hope you can see that. That is the rig that I'm hoping is going to... Shit! God, it's barbless up here. Ooh. Here we go. That's perfect. Right, this is a hit and hold job. So, strictly the one rod for the time being. I'm gonna get comfortable. I haven't fished like this for years. No alarms, no seat. Gonna happen there, give it another hour or so, and my back's gonna be wrecking. A lot of people don't really like it when um, these pools are overgrown and the access is limited, but I just love it because it gives it that air of um, it's like you're at a pool that's never been fished before. 
can see that wild factor, I suppose, is what I'm trying to say. But uh, I have noticed that all this area behind me, it's all been flattened down, so other people have obviously had the same idea. I mean, it can't be just me that thinks that this is a fantastic spot. water quality in terms of cleanliness, pH levels and all the rest of it, but it must be good, or when I say good it must be ideal for the fish, because as we speak there is literally thousands and thousands of fry out in front of me. And then if we look further out to the right, see all the splashing where the big fish are taking them it's obviously dinner time for the big ones yeah. can't put up with this any longer which is galore time for the hoodie about half seven now there's lots of bubbling right above my rig this is almost bite time I'd say now yeah it's looking good A little back lead on there. Do feel. I do feel a lot more confident with the back lead on. I always seem to do better. Um, I don't like line up in the water. I like it to be pinned down. I know a lot of people say, oh, you shouldn't back lead when the snags, but I've got my right, I've got my rod right here anyway. And um, I'm not locked up as such, but almost. Um, and the snags are in front of me, slightly to the right, but in front of me. So I know as soon as I feel that tension, I can guide him out to the left, I'll just steer him out to the left. So I'll put my rod down, put the tip of, tip of my rod in the water 
just steering to the left. Guys, I'm going to be buzzing if this goes off. The only thing I'll miss is that uh, alarm. That literally is a buzz in it when you get, you know, when you get to hear that, that sound. This is old school, proper old school. done away with the little and often because I remember earlier when I put some dog biscuits down there um, right under a tree that spooked the carp believe it or not so uh, I haven't put any bait out now for probably about an hour hour and 15 maybe it is quarter to nine now lights fading but I'm still feeling confident I still think it's gonna go this is proper bite time now feeding bubbles are they've died off a little bit but they're still there it's just more sporadic now it's funny because they're tracking around so the carp are obviously on the move Just hope there's enough light that if I do catch one, you can see it properly. That would definitely be a bonus. The only other way, the only other way I can get around it is by turning my ISO up on the camera, but that'll just create a load of noise and. Uh, I don't really, don't really like doing that, to be honest. In hindsight, I should have put my video light in there, in the, the rucksack. I'm caught in two mines here, I don't know what to do. Um, part of me thinks I should bring my rig back in and check it over, because I really expected something by now. And I'm thinking, as a carp done me, and then I'm left in a bit of a mess. And I'm also thinking, have I got some leaves or twigs around my, uh, around my hook? I really don't know what to do. It's getting on now as well. one of them <sighs> I'm gonna bring it back I've just got a feeling something isn't right splashing off usual area
well, as it happens, there was nothing wrong with it. So I'm going to get it out as soon as. To use a footballing analogy, we're fast approaching injury time. I think the fourth official is about to hold the board up. Mm. Oh, guys, the um light is really dropping now so hope if I do manage to hook one that you can see it <laughs> can't believe it I felt really confident I really did <laughs> just goes to show doesn't it you just you just never know I mean they're still feeding those out there at 20 yards are still feeding bubbles They are getting closer to my rig. It could still happen. But like I say, I just hope you can see it. I reckon I've got, at the most, half an hour of light left. I mean, I've got my head torch here, but I don't really want to be leaving it till too late. Fingers crossed. To be honest with you, I just don't get it. I felt confident tonight, did everything I could, sharpened my hooks, the right rigs as far as I know. Fishing in what I thought to be good areas. But it's just turned out quite bewildering quite strange and confusing I suppose but there you go that's fishing for you or at least that's carping for you um, but I will be back part two coming up soon or shortly stay tuned thanks for watching guys see you soon